So when one goes down, kind of all heck breaks loose. Well, following its start of summer meltdown in service, Washington State Ferries looks to chart a new course as their fleet ages and crew members become harder and harder to find. Crew shortages, mechanical issues, and wait times. Washington State Ferries hasn't been able to return to normal status since the pandemic. And now they're looking to change some schedules to better reflect what operations they can run. That includes public talks next week about the schedule of ferries making runs to the San Juans. Fox 13's Matthew Smith takes a closer look to see if we will be seeing any improvements anytime soon. Matthew. Well, I think it's more accurate to say you're going to see adjustments. This is just part of the realities of running the largest fleet of ferries anywhere in the U.S. If you think about training staff to run ferries like this, it's a lot like airliners. It takes a lot of hours. And for those who ride these boats regularly, they admit things have gotten better since the pandemic, but they expect it's going to get worse. I hate lines. Luckily for Tom Carter, midday, mid morning, that's better time to go. Lines were minimal here at the Edmonds Ferry Terminal today. Though, one look at Washdot's vessel watch, and you'll see multiple ferries in red running half hour or more behind today. Kind of became a little bit more of a madhouse. I just didn't think it would be so bad that we would be stuck overnight. Issues like we saw on Memorial Day get a lion's share of attention. After all, 99 cars were stuck on the San Juans overnight. There was nowhere to go. Uh, literally, people complained about bathrooms being locked up to staff during a public meeting. Yeah, the other night when we left people behind, we left the restrooms unlocked. Okay, we had a few questions about both the Anacortes Terminal and Friday Harbor Terminal. Um, folks have been stuck overnight and had the restrooms locked, so sounds okay. like that's something we could follow up on. Uh, but the reality is it's not just tourists being affected. We know that if you're a hospice patient, if you're going for chemotherapy, if you're trying to get to work, these cancellations really impact your lives. On top of crew shortages, WSF is facing a vessel problem. New ferries aren't coming online as quickly as others reach retirement age. I think retirement age is being kind. They're old, and I don't expect it to get better. I expect it to get worse. George isn't a naysayer. In fact, he says things have improved since the pandemic for him. They're really trying really trying and it shows he's noticed new faces new crew but the reality is boats like the Tilikum are supposed to go offline this year instead to keep routes open the state will make repairs and keep ferries in service longer than expected but the reality is we routinely see long lines whenever ships break down heck on the islands the inner island ferry jumped to 10 days with cancellations in may and between crew shortages and vessel breakdowns, WSF has already had to delay reopening some routes to normal service, including the triangle route of Fauntleroy, Port Townsend, Coopville. Services has gone downhill, but back to my first point, I think the staff, the people they've hired are really good. Now, we've been reporting for some time about the silver tsunami that hit at the exact same time that the pandemic hit, forcing a lot of people out of jobs to run ferries just like this one. And the reality is it takes a very long time to train people. They're doing that, but it does take time. In fact, just last week, the director of WSF says that they've been talking with people from all the ferry systems all across the U.S., and everybody's dealing with issues. And so far, while they're all working on it, nobody's finding that one thing that fixes the problems they're facing. We're in Edmonds, Matthew Smith, Fox 13 News.